Greetings guys, here we go, video two. So we're going to be talking about parent functions. One of them is going to be the function y equals e to the x. And you might be saying, what is e? Well, e is a number. e is almost three. It is, it's 2.7. 1828, 1828, round it off, it's almost 3, it's closer to 3 than it is 2, but it actually lives on your calculator. Right next to the log button on your calculator, you will see a button that says LN. LN is logus naturalis, which is the Greek way to say natural log. What's that? Natural log is when you take a logarithm and its base is the number 2.7182818281828. Now, here's the thing with this. I had you guys graph a bunch of exponential functions for me, and I had you graph a bunch of logarithmic functions for me, um, because I wanted you to see that no matter what you do to them, they all pretty much have the same type of look. For example, if I was going to graph any exponential function, I would know that there's going to be a horizontal asymptote. One unit away from that asymptote, there will, there will be a dot. And then most graphs do this. That's what they look like. Guess what? This is exactly what y equals e to the x looks like. So this is going to be my first parent function. Because e is a number it is located right above the LN button. You'll see e to the power. And if you take e to the first, you will get 2.7182818288. It'll keep going. This is a number that you will see a whole lot of in calculus. And um, the number e, and you go, why do they call it e? Well, why do they call pi? 3.14. Why do they call i the square root of negative 1? Well, e actually was discovered by a mathematician named Euler. E-U-L-E-R. Euler is how it's pronounced. So he thought highly of himself and called the number after himself, called it e. So what I need you guys to get out of this, just to get started here, is that this is one of our parent functions. This is what it will look like when we graph it, and we can shift it up, down, right, left, and we can flip it, just like we can with <coughs> excuse me, every function that we have. So, I think that's a first for me, sneezing on a video. All right, so anyway... One of our functions that we're going to use for a parent function is y equals e to the x. That's exponential. And then this guy, like I said, if you have a log with a base value of e, we don't write it like this. This is not something we do. We call it ln. We call it natural log. There is a uh, button on your calculator for that. Um, but here we go. What does this look like? What does y equals ln x look like? Well, it's got a vertical asymptote, just like every log graph does. And then one unit away from the asymptote, there's this locator point, this dot that all the graphs have. And then it looks like any other log function. It does that, where it becomes asymptotic. A vertical asymptote, and then it slowly builds to the right. So here we go. This guy is our logarithmic parent function we're going to use. This is our exponential parent function we are going to use. 
and we are going to do some shifting and flipping. So if you haven't guessed, here is your assignment for this. I have 15 problems. It says, sketch each graph based on its parent function, mark the asymptote, locator point, and state the domain and range. So, we have done similar stuff to this. Oh, and by the way, pause it, take a picture of it. Those are your 15 uh, practice problems. Uh, then, here is your answer key with domains and ranges. So, I want to make sure that you follow my pattern here. You'll notice I have marked the asymptote on every one of these graphs. I have marked the locator point, which is going to be like this guy has a locator point. This guy's got a locator point. This guy's got a locator point. Um, I will talk about that when we go over the, the graphing. Um, but if your graph isn't matching mine, something's amiss. Figure out what it is. Um, and once again, domain and range, we're going to be using interval notation, which is the uh, parentheses with different infinities or numerical values. Remember, these functions, this parent right here and this parent right here, they have asymptotes. And mom always said, you don't use brackets on an asymptotic function. Everything you do for domain and range will be parentheses. So let's begin. Let's start playing around with these. Oh, by the way, you can pause that take a picture of it, you have your answer key. All right, let's play. First things first, they're going to give me something like this. I'm going to start with e. e to the x plus 2 minus 3. This is, you know, we're going to do the opposite same thing. Remember, when you see it like this, you're setting this, you're pretending this chunk right here, what would you have to plug in for x to uh, make this thing equal zero, you'd have to plug in negative two. So what that tells me is my graph is going to go left two, and then, did you guess it? This is down three. Now here's the thing, though. When you shift this function, when you shift this parent, this guy right here, this vertical shift going down three, this is going to relocate your asymptote. So whenever you do these problems, I always say, follow the asymptote. So it's like you took this function and you went one, two, three units down. So guess what? Your asymptote is no longer on the x-axis. It's three units down. So I call that moving it so that you drop the floor on this function. Now, normally, this function would then go one unit above, and I'd go like this. But don't pull the trigger too quick. You're going to go left two units. So I'm going to get rid of those. So I'm going to go left two units, which means I would go one unit above the asymptote, one unit above, but I'd start two units to the left, and then I could sketch this graph. And remember, these are rough sketches of these functions. And this guy right here is the locator point. So the locator point, I'm just going to ask you to mark it. And when we do take the test for this unit, I will totally look for that. It's one unit away from the asymptote, always. One unit away from the asymptote. Okay. Okay. And then what do we have? Well, it goes this way forever. It goes left forever. It goes right forever. But it's going up. Yeah, but it's going right when it goes up. Remember, domain does not care about sideways. Range only cares about how low is the graph, how high is the graph. And we always read range from the bottom up. So the bottom of this graph is at the asymptote at negative 3. But it never touches the asymptote, so we do not put a bracket. We put a parenthesis. So there's my first example. Now, let's play. We're going to do another one. 
but this time, whoop, come on, there it is. This time when we do it, I'm going to graph this guy. We'll do y equals uh, e to the x plus 2. Now, I took away one of the moves. Which move did I take away? Did I take away the sideways move? Or did I take away the up-down move? And when it comes to the e function, if I wanted to, I could write that in if it helps your brain see it better. And I go, oh, it still went up 2. So now I'm taking the asymptote and I'm shifting it up 2 units. I am not going to go sideways at all. I'm going zero motion sideways. So I'm going to go one unit above, dink, and I would sketch my graph. Okay. Could I tell you the domain and range of that? Sure, I could say the domain goes like this. In fact, no matter what you do to an exponential function, its domain will always be that answer. But its range can change. Ooh, that's a fresh run. So I would say 2 is the floor of this one, and then it goes upward. So I could say 2 comma infinity. Now, I wanted to do this right on the same graph. So I'm going to grab a red pen, and I'm going to make this a negative. And what would that do to me? Well, that would flip my graph. Now, there's two kinds of flips. We learned that when we were going through the inverse section. There could be a negative on the function, or there could be a negative on the variable. When the negative is on the function, that is going to be a top to bottom flip. So what does that do to this picture? Well, instead of going up one unit, I would have gone down one unit. And my graph would have looked like that. So how does that change things? Would my domain be the same? Sure, my domain. It goes to the left forever. It goes to the right forever. No matter what you do to an E function, you can't change that. But now, this asymptote, is no longer a floor, it's a ceiling. It's the top of my function. So think of it as a floor or a ceiling because now the range goes from negative infinity, it goes from its lowest to its highest point of two. I wanted to make sure I did a direct comparison for that function. Now, let's just throw one more picture in here because I could have not done this, nah, but I could have done this. What if I had stuck the negative on the x? This would still be my asymptote. It would still be my asymptote. Vertical motion will be the asymptote of any exponential function. But what would happen if the negative was on the variable? When the negative's on the variable, that's a side-to-side -side flip. So what it does then, instead of going one unit this way and doing that, no, nope, we're not doing that, we would do one unit above the asymptote, but the sideways motion would have rotated it over that way. Now take a look at the blue graph. It has the same domain and range answer as which one? The black graph or the red graph? The blue graph has the same exact domain and range as the black graph. So when we start messing with parent functions, we did this at the very beginning. It was the very first lesson I put on, uh, on YouTube for you guys. Well, guess what? Now we're going to see how this just keeps growing and keeps building, keeps moving. Um, I'm going to get a black pen again. Thank you. And then we're going to try another E function. But let's try a little function notation. We'll go f of x equals e to the 4 minus x. How about plus 
one. Now, I know this is kind of backwards, this is kind of wacky, but do you see that the negative is on the x? The negative is on the variable. I say negative on the variable means it's going to be a sideways flip. And think about it. What would I have to plug into x to make that say 0? I would have to plug in 4. So don't be fooled. That does not mean go 4 to the left. But it's negative x. No. 4 would be the number you'd plug in to make that thing say 0. So that means this graph is going to go 4 units to the right. 4. It's this little negative is going to affect the flip. But what about the floor or the ceiling? What about the asymptote? Well, that's still this guy over here. This would move my graph up one unit. So I go up one unit. That's going to be my new asymptote. I could call it a floor for this function because this function is not getting flipped downward. I'm going to start at the asymptote, count one unit up from there, and that's my locator point. Now, the normal function would go like this. That's what the normal function would look like, but I've been flipped, so I'm going to do it again in blue. What the heck? So the new function would be this one instead. I'm going to get rid of this guide graph. That's my final answer. It goes that way forever. No matter what I do to this function, it will have a domain from negative infinity to infinity. How about the range on this one, though? Go lowest to highest. Lowest would be 1. But it's an asymptote, so don't put a bracket. It's not a bracket. Whoa, I don't know what that was. I'm going to get rid of it. Don't put a bracket. <laughs> One is the lowest, and then it goes upward forever. Okay, so when it comes to a parent function graphing, from day one, every graph obeys the same rules of motion, but depending on who's negative, what's being done to it, it can get a little bit confusing. Please don't uh, rush it. Just go one step at a time and realize the rules never change once you know what they are. Now, let's do one more that's an E function, and then we'll go on to uh, some log function uh, sketches. But, you know, I'm going to use Y equals, or I'm going to use uh, G of X, F of X, whatever. So let's do this one. I'm going to do a negative e to the negative x minus 4. Look at all those negatives. Oh, my gosh. So what the heck? Remember, I could say plus 0 right here if I wanted to. So I'm not moving sideways at all. This guy is still my vertical motion, so this guy is going to control my location of the asymptote, and I'm going to have a double flip. This one right here is going to make it flip from top to bottom, and this one right here is going to make it flip sideways. So a double flip might sound, oh, that's horrible. Actually, a double flip works in our favor because it doesn't matter which one you do first, you will still end up in the exact same location. So let's, let's graph this thing. And you know what? I'm going to grab a black pen. So when I graph it. So here, I'm going to graph it. Come on, straighten out. Won't straighten out? No? Okay, you know what? Maybe it's because I'm going over a page. Um, here, I'll do it right here. Let's see. Straighten out. Perfect. Over here. Boom. Okay. This guy goes down four units. This is my new asymptote. Normally, this graph would go one unit above and then go like this. 
Now, I call this drawing in a guide graph. When you guys do the practice problems, you might want to use a pencil and a pen because you can then erase the guides. Now, I'm going to use that as my guide so I can visualize things, but here's my first move. I'm going to do it in blue. I'm going to make this graph flip down. I'm going to use this first. So if I go down one, instead of going up one unit, I would have gone down one unit, my graph would have done this. Then I'm going to get a different color pen. How about green? I'm going to say, okay, what would this have done? This would have made it cause to go sideways. So I already flipped it down. So now if I flip it sideways, it would go like that. So the green graph is my final answer. So the green picture is my final answer. For this occurring and for this occurring. But you know what? Look, if I had done it this way first, let's get a different color. If I had taken the original guide graph and gone sideways first, I would have been there. And then if I had flipped that down, I'd be in the exact same spot as that green graph. So it can get kind of complicated looking, but when there's no flippage involved, you'd have that black picture. If you just flip sideways, you'd have the red picture. If you just flip down, you would have had the blue picture. And if you do both flips, you're at the green picture. It takes practice and you can always check your answer with a graphing calculator. That's the nice thing. Um, however, I have warned you, graphing calculators are notorious for not being able to draw any kind of vertical asymptote. But that's why the locator point for all these graphs, the locator point is so important. Because your locator point has got to be one unit away from that asymptote, so you should always be able to name the locator point for me, and that's your key to checking it with a graphing calculator. Now, just for this lesson, I just want, here, I'm going to, just for this lesson, I'm going to get rid of all these little guide graphs and everything. I'm just going to get rid of that red there. Oop, oh my god, let's undo that. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to the green. Boom. Oh my god, it's red. Go back to the green. You know what? I'm just going to draw over it. What's the domain? No matter what I do to it, it goes to the left forever. It goes to the right forever. Even though it's going down, it's also going left. What's the range? Well, think of it once again. Does this graph have a floor or a ceiling? This graph has a ceiling. It goes down forever, but it tops out. Whoops, oh my God, I don't know what I did. It tops out, the highest point it hits is at negative four, but it does not have a bracket. Oh my God, never put a bracket on an asymptotic function. That's where the boundary is, but the boundary is never touched. Okay, we did some E functions. Let's take a look at natural log. And natural log is the same as this stuff. So what was my natural log graph again? Well, the parent function, the parent, was this guy, y equals natural log of x. And, come on, it has a wall. It does not have a floor or a ceiling. The natural log function has a wall. And normally, it goes one unit away from that wall. That would be the locator point. And it goes like this. So just for kicks, let's, let's just play with a couple flips before we do anything else. If I wanted to put a negative on the function, that means it's going to flip top to bottom. So top to bottom, this would be the flip. Oh my gosh, I could draw a little better than that. That was a little wobbly. But that would be that type of flip. That is a top to bottom flip. What if I had instead had a negative on the letter? 
Well, if it was a negative on the letter, it would have flipped it sideways. It would have gone over here. But if I had both of these negatives, oh my gosh, well, let me do this. Hang on. It would have been here. Now, it's kind of a cool looking design, but blue, that would be just a top to bottom flip. Red, that would be if it was just a sideways flip. Green would indicate both of these flips are occurring. So once again, when you flip one of these functions, this guy has a vertical asymptote, so everything goes around that. Just like over here, oh, I erased it. Ah, I did. Um, you had um, a similar design to look at. So let's go here. Let's go here. Let's just play with a couple. Uh, y equals, I'm just going to do a straightforward uh, natural log x plus 2. but I'm going to make it negative. So what kind of flip did I just put on this thing? Did I put a top to bottom flip or did I put a sideways flip? This guy is a top to bottom flip. So let's see what he looks like. First things first. This you would set equal to zero in your mind. What would x have to be to make it equal 0? It would have to be negative 2. Now think about it. You're going to go sideways negative 2, which means you are moving the wall. These do not have floors or ceilings. Natural logs, the asymptote is vertical. So think of it like you're moving the wall to the left or the right. So I just moved the wall to the left. Now, one unit away from that wall would be right here, dot and then this would be the normal graph coming up like this. This would be the normal version of it, but I've been flipped top to bottom. So what does that look like? It looks like this. Let's get rid of our guide graph. Get away. That's my guide graph. I don't want to see that. And that's my final answer. Now, this is a log function. It's a natural log. It's just a log graph with a base of 2.71828182828. We don't want to write that out. So that's why Euler, he started uh, calling this thing E, and then he said, no way, I'm just going to call it natural log, L-N, logus naturalis, that's Latin. Well, guess what? No matter what you do to a log, it will have the same exact range every time. But its domain can change. So the domain on this one, think about it. Where's the wall? The wall is at negative 2, and then it goes to the right. Bam, that's your answer. So... When it comes to graphing these things, when it's an E function, think of that asymptote as a floor or a ceiling. When it's a natural log function, think of that asymptote as a wall that can go either left or right. Let's play the game again. Let's just, we're going to dink around with a couple more, and then you know what? You got to get your hands dirty and start working eventually. So this time I'm going to do this. I'm going to say ln of 3 minus x plus 1. Now, normally I think, oh, that's my asymptote. No, no, no. That's only your asymptote when it's an e function. This will make me go up 1, but it doesn't control where my asymptote is at all. What would you have to plug in for x to make this say 0? What would the x have to be? It would have to be a 3. If I plug in x equals 3, 1, 2, 3, that's where my wall is. I'm not talking about floors and ceilings. This is a log function. I got a wall that I just moved. Now here's the other thing. That negative, that negative is on the variable. It's not out front. It's not on the function. It's on the variable. 
So that is a sideways flip. That's a sideways flip. So what does this mean? Well, I'm going to go up one. Don't forget, we have to go up one. But normally, my graph would go one unit away from the asymptote. Normally, it would look like this. It would. But this is a sideways flip. So I'm going to flop it over the other side of this asymptote. Let's get rid of the guide graph. This was my guide. I don't want that. There is my final answer. Now, you get much better at this with practice, but you've already done all these moves on different functions. We did this with parabolas, with absolute values. We did it with 1 over x, 1 over x squared. We did it with third power. We have done a lot of this stuff already. Cube root, square root. Now it's time to play with exponential functions <clears throat> and logarithmic functions. But I hope you see that this thing goes up forever, down forever. So no matter what, it will have this range. No matter what I do to this thing, what's going to change is the domain. This guy goes to the left forever, and then it stops at 3. 3 is where the wall is on this function. That's where its domain stops. Let's try another. And remember, you can pause this at any time. You can re-watch this at any time. Let's do one that looks like, I don't know, how about a negative natural log negative x minus 3, something like that. Once again, this is definitely going to move me vertically, down 3, but that is not my asymptote. Remember, when it's a log function, you find your asymptote right here. So if you wanted to, you could think of this as negative x plus nothing minus 3. Don't forget I had a minus out front. There's my, my problem again. So what's going to happen is my wall is at 0, which means my wall, come on, is right down the middle. And normally this function would go one unit to the right, away from the asymptote. But this guy right here, this is when he's going to do his job. He's like, wait, wait, go down three, then go one unit over. Then you could sketch your graph. And then this guy and this guy are now going to kick in. So you know what? Let's color coat this. I'm going to do this one blue, and I'm going to do the other one red. And here's what would happen if I did the red action before the blue action. Remember, I already sketched in the way this graph looks if I didn't mess with it. But I'm going to flip this one top to bottom. So top to bottom flip would have made it go like that. Oops, a little wobbly with my hand. And then the blue guy would have said, wait a minute, you're not done yet, because if you were going to flip this sideways, instead of going one to the right, I would have gone one to the left, and then it would have been this graph. So the final answer would not be this guy, that would be if I didn't do anything to it. It would not be this guy, that's if I flip it down. This blue graph is when I flipped it to the other side, so that would incorporate both movements in this picture. So I'm going to erase all this other stuff so it's not in my face, and I'd say, okay, the blue graph represents what happens after I do this, uh, this first flip, and then I did that second flip. I did both flips. This made my graph go down three, one, two, three units, but still one unit away from the asymptote. That's the locator point. So when we start playing with this, 
that locator point would just be negative 1, negative 3. That's its name. Now, on the answer key, um, I didn't ask you to name the locator point. I just said mark it so you can see where it is. So just give me that big dot, and that's good enough. But which one of these two answers will never change for a logarithmic function, the domain or the range? The range won't change. It goes down forever. It goes up forever. Now the domain, though, it will go to the left forever. It will hit its barrier, its wall, at zero. That is where it will hit the wall. Okay. Now, this lesson is one of those lessons. This is why I told you guys um, uh, you got to get your t-table graphs done first so you get an idea of what log graphs look like and what exponentials look like. But since you know they always look the same, they have the same type of vibe, let me go all the way to here. I mean, that's what an exponential graph looks like. This is what a logarithmic graph looks like mostly. Then we start playing with Let's shift these things around. So here's the 15 questions I want you to try. And then check your answers. Do the problem, then check it. Do the next problem, then check it. Do the third problem, then check it. Don't try to do all of them and then go back and look and go, oh crap, I got them all wrong. Do one at a time because it really does take practice to get really good at this. But with 15 practice problems, I have a feeling by the time you get to the last one, you're pretty successful at this. Also, domains and ranges. And notice, every time I graph something, you can clearly see where my locator point is. That's how we're going to use it to check it on the calculator. I'll show you that when we're in the Zoom room. Okay, so there's your answer key. There's your practice. Good luck, and don't forget to ask questions. Um, if you get stuck. Alrighty, that's it.